Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Leanne, and I'll be facilitating our caregiver support group this afternoon on behalf of the Caregiver Foundation. And I would like to introduce our guest speaker, um, Savi Sav Savina Makalena, is the Chief Executive Officer and found founder of Give Me a Break Hawaii. She's a lifetime caregiver, a daughter, mother, and mentor with a firm grounding in business management um, and training and development. For the past seven years, she has devoted her time as a caregiver for her father and mother, and also um, remaining steadfast by her spouse um, during uh, a battle with cancer. So at this point, I'd like to turn the the um, microphone over to our guest speaker, Savvy Makalena. Thanks for joining us, Savvy. Absolutely, thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor. Um, <clears throat> well, I didn't even know, I guess that <laughs> seven years, it's actually been longer now. So I guess I have to update the website. Um, and I am here on Oahu uh, and, and I will probably be on the East Coast. I will actually be on the East Coast, where you, so, close to where you are um, in a week. I'll be at the National Caregiver Summit in Washington, D.C. Um, so I'm looking forward to advocating for caregivers there. Um, but good evening to all of you. Good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. And I just wanted to share a little bit about Give Me a Break and what we do. Uh, so here we go. Let me just get the share screen going and choose the correct screen. Perfect. I think you can all see it now. So give me a break. Uh, we, uh, we are actually a nonprofit organization that is caring for caregivers. We are a 501c3 organization, and it is truly our mission to provide for caregivers by giving an emotional, physical break, as well as resources for your continued wellness. Um, give me a break with your doctor that you are a caregiver. And if you have not, please let them know. They will see that you are at risk and treat you differently. Okay, and then um, going back to something that you said um, in the very, very beginning um, and caring for your mom and mm. mom and dad, and there is a continuum of care where, you know, the the loved one, you know, had, um, uh, has great needs for care and maybe stabilizes. And then there's another period of great need for care. And this could all take place over years. So how, yeah, do you have any tips for our caregivers? You know, how to hang in there and, and continue self-care while yeah. caring for someone else? Yeah, a million tips. Um, and I share them every week with our caregivers, but just a million tips. But I think that, again, I'm going to preach wellness and self-care. You have to prioritize you. You have to. If When my mother was placed into foster care, that was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. I went into depression for nine months. The beauty is after nine months, I gave birth to give me a break. And so give me a break is the baby that's helping everybody else. And ironically, it was nine months. But I will tell you in that time, um, I was so depressed and I was so distraught until I realized that it was okay. I needed to know it was okay. I thought I just blame myself for everything. And so I think that the first thing you can do is not be so hard on yourself and realize that you can't do everything perfectly. And it's okay if you don't. And at one point, the one you care for may very possibly hit a level of care that you are not able to give them. And recognizing their need for that level of care is a very important thing. And it's no reflection on you personally, because we put so much heart into caring for somebody. And then we attach ourselves by then saying, only I can take care of them this well. And we feel like we might've failed them. But everyone in, in, in life that we all face death, 
and we all get to a point where the level of care that we need is not one that somebody who's not a professional can always provide. So understand that it's not you, it's a level of care. And when I got to understand that for my mom, that really helped me know that she was actually in better hands. By the way, that was three years ago. My mother is still alive today. She survived four times out of hospice because of her foster care. Had she been with me, she might not have survived. I think that the level of care was beyond me and I was in over my head and I was exhausted. And when you're exhausted, you can't be your best. So you're going to make a lot of mistakes. And I, it almost killed me. So I was suicidal. I was um, a high risk for heart attack. I had gained, I am still losing the weight I gained because I wasn't eating right. I gained a ridiculous amount of weight. And so caregiving should be a joy. And I think that that's what we need to hold in our heart is I wish I had known all that I know now, because then instead of going through all of that, I would have made memories because the most, the thing I miss the most is her laugh and I would have laughed more. I hope that answers. Yeah, I think so. And can you, um, speak about the importance of social connections for caregivers. Or very early on, too, you you mentioned, you know, because we can be so consumed with the caregiving that we don't connect with our friends or do the activities that we we enjoy as as individuals. So, yes. can you speak about the importance of, of social connections? Uh, it's 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 not even important. It is a necessity. So we actually do a 10 part series on the wellness wheel. And the wellness wheel has several things on the wellness wheel. It's our social, our mental, our physical, all the different types of wellnesses that we all need. And we do it in our sessions um, and we go through a, a 10 week uh, period when we do the wellness wheel. We just completed it a few months back. So it may be coming around in a little bit. Um, but social wellness, we spend a, a, a whole session on talking about why that's so important. And when you become isolated and separate yourself, it happens so quickly in caregiving because you go from calm to chaos in a moment and you don't have time to think. You're just doing and going. And the next thing you realize, you haven't taken a bath in a week. You haven't been able to wash your hair in two weeks and you haven't talked to anybody else in maybe even longer. And so, you know, any kind of wellness is really something that's, that's more deliberate and planned. And so we, we help you to use, provide useful tools, how you can be more deliberate about that and about your social or your mental or your physical or even vocational wellness. Um, and in doing it so in caregiver moments, I think one of the hardest things out there for all of us in any kind of wellness social and otherwise, is that everyone else expects you to put an hour in and you can't put an hour in a day as a caregiver. You have to know how to do it in a second, in a minute, maybe five. And so we break it down in ways that you can do it throughout the day and take mindful moments for yourself. But social is one of the hardest too, because even if you do find somebody to care for the one you're caring for, again, you haven't washed your hair in a week and you gained weight and you don't even wear your clothes anymore. You're so used to wearing that same t-shirt and, you know, putting your hair up and, you know, that you think, God, if I go out there and people see me like this with these dark circles and bags under my eyes, then they'll think I can't handle what I'm doing. And I'm working really hard to keep someone alive. So you cut off your social contacts and not intentionally, you're just embarrassed maybe, or maybe you're going through a rough time or maybe there isn't anyone to cover for you. So it's really hard that way. I mean, thank goodness for virtual and being online, right? We can Zoom, but even then you don't always want people to see you and it's hard, you might, you might not turn on your video. We have a lot in our session that it takes them weeks before they turn their video on because they realize they look like hell and that's okay. 
it's perfectly fine. Embrace that. We call it the new fashion. It's caregiver look. <laughs> and we all have it. So it's okay. But that, that happens socially. And so there are ways to still be social. We, and I highly recommend what you're doing, which is being part of a social, of a support group. And that's one of the best things you can do is to form community with other caregivers as well, just like you, so that you can encourage one another. Okay, thanks. So Savvy, are you able to stay on the call for a few minutes to talk to our caregivers? We'll, we'll tur be turning off the video in, in just a bit, but are yes, absolutely. On? Okay, great. So um, before we turn the video off, um, are there any final concluding thoughts that you'd like to take a takeaway from today's session? A takeaway for everyone. Um, what I always say, you're amazing. And if no one's told you that, I'm telling you that. From one caregiver to another, you're absolutely amazing and you are worthy of being healthy, finding joy and purpose in life. Thank you very much, uh, Savvy. 